there's even more that you can do with masking fluid you just need to have some confidence practice and um, use a few tips that I'm going to share with you now so I'm just going to do a simple picture and hopefully it will all come on video this is the first time I've done anything quite like this so we shall see how it goes shall we so first things first ditch the brushes I do not use a brush ever um, I have never had much success. I've tried colour shapers. The um, silicone brushes do work reasonably well, but you still, if you want a really fine line, the only tool that you ever need is this. And this is called a ruling pen. Now you may have seen one before, you may not, but it's, the, it's my go-to tool for whenever I do anything with masking fluid. Uh, there are lots of masking fluids available. I've tried the one with a little needle. It's all very well, but it gets a nice fine line until you get an air bubble and then it goes. Pfft. My favourite masking fluid by far is the Windsor and Newton. I've tried the coloured ones. They can tint the paper. If you want that, that's fine. I don't. So, and it's very similar to the Dollar Rowney one, but I still prefer the Windsor and Newton because it flows better and it peels off nicely. A few other things to bear in mind with masking fluid. One is that when you're using masking fluid, you want to make sure it's fairly fresh. It gets to a point where it becomes really gunky at the bottom. Now you can remove that and it can still be okay. But once it starts smelling a bit fishy, it's probably best to ditch it. It does smell, it always has a little smell, but trust me, when it's beginning to go off, it really does stink and you don't want that on your mask, on your, on your paper. The other thing to bear in mind is that, my, my mind's gone now. <laughs> the other thing to bear in mind um, is obviously you don't want to use it from the bottle. I did that once, it went all over my studio floor, it took me absolutely ages to clear up. Full bottle of masking fluid on your floor is no good. <laughs> so what I normally do is I use one of these now it's a bit dirty at the moment and that's deliberate because I wanted to show you just how easy it is to peel off because those bits you peel off and normally when I've used it I let it dry in the little well because that is one of your best tools for removing masking fluid there are other tools available which I will discuss at a later point but that's what I use I might break this video down into several because I think it's going to be quite long otherwise, but I will still do the full one. So there you go. So there's, there is the ink well, paint well, whatever you want. So what I'm going to do now is I will open the bottle, nice little bit of squeak, childproof blocks that children can get into but parents can't. There we go. Now this isn't too bad. Now I'll just pull that out into there. And as you see, you want it so it's kind of like um, a double cream. You can dilute it. And what I'd say is dilute with caution. I tend to use a spray bottle like this. And then I'll, I'll spritz it in. I'm not going to because that's more or less how I want it. But I, I, I do a couple of squirts like that then stir it in. And that works fine. What you want is it to come when you dip your ruling pen in if you can see there it's slightly coated on either side but it, it it fills up the well quite nicely and what I normally do when I start is I'll wipe it down like that so that you can basically do anything with it and I'm going to move to some black paper because this is impossible to see on white so I'm hoping on black paper you can see that better so anything you do with a now, what I've just done there is I cleaned out the, the, the channel in the middle. I had a lump. It dries very quickly, so you often get lumps, and I'm forever doing that when I'm using it. So I just peel it out. This is why I don't use brushes, because no matter how careful you are with a brush, you will end up with it drying on. Because you stop to think, and then it all goes pear-shaped. So as you see, you can do anything you like. And I, I'm constantly cleaning it up, so I'll always get some on my... And you can do anything. You can do nice squiggly lines like that. Right, let's go over here where you can see better. So Now that's the type of thing I'm going to be doing on the paper. I don't know how well it will look because they never do turn out very 
clear but if I can get the angle of the light right that might work quite nicely but just so you can see so that's that's what it's looking like when it's applying and that will all go clear you can see where I, I did it before it's now quite clear and obviously with this one if I painted this this would turn out um, with black lines underneath and I want white lines Now, when I'm doing, I always start with a watercolour wash. And when I start with a watercolour wash, when I can find my brush, I'm just going to do one colour on this. You'll understand why in a, in a little while. So now, before I start any wash, and this is something that's true in any watercolour painting. Before I start any watercolour wash, I start off with a wash of water. But basically, I am making sure everything is wet because otherwise, if you start painting and the paint per is completely dry, what will happen is the moment you touch that with your brush, you will end up with all the paint getting sucked in and a hard edge. And that's fine if you want a hard edge, but if you don't want a hard edge, you need to do this first. So I'm just going to use yellow. And you can see this masking has been on quite a little while now, so that's actually developing a bit of a stain of its own. So I'm going to start now with a brush, large brushes. I don't use small brushes. So I don't, and you need to be careful when you're applying paint over masking fluid because masking fluid is quite brittle. So, uh, so I cover it all as quickly as I can. And then I cover the whole lot with a bit of masking, with a bit of cling film. Get my words going. I'm just going to... Tear that off the roll. And then you can actually scrunch it up. And then this is the bit where I'm going to have to stop the video for a bit because it's going to take a little while for it actually to have some effect. So it's best if we just stop now and you can see what's going to happen in a little bit. So let's stop now. Right, so here we are with the masking fluid removed. I'm going to apply some inks just to show you a little bit more about how I use, I work with my paintings. So this is just a little bit of dark red. And I think we might do some bits up there. And the beauty of abstracts is you can really experiment and go where the flight takes you. Now you can see that's beginning to spread out. I'm just gonna assist that in along when you're working in watercolour, watercolour content is key. So you want to be able to control that as much as possible. So I'm going to spray on some water, a little water bottle like that with a spray top. I think every watercolour artist needs these because there are times like now when that really works quite well. Now, I think I'd like a little bit more colour in there. So what shall we go with? I think I'm going to stay in with the oranges and reds. And let's maybe use something that's a little bit more brilliant. There's a nice bright red over there. I shall just reach over and knock everything. So let's keep with the reds going. And I think I need something to pull it back a little bit because... That's working quite well. I quite like that. That's going quite nicely. I think I might th use some, throw some salt at it now. I use salt quite a lot. And I put them in little pots now. It's just common old garden um, kitchen salt. The stuff you get in the plastic tubs or cardboard boxes, whatever you get your salt in. And that tends to pull the colours out quite nicely. So I quite like working that, particularly with the thing in the middle. And I think I want something in the middle there, which might be completely different. I have got a really beautiful dark green here. So I think we're going to go with dark green in the middle, right in the middle and see what happens. I am just going to let that do what it wants to do. And you see it's still moving and it'll carry on moving for a while. I tend to find my paintings marinade. So I'll paint them and then come back the following day and something wonderful has happened. Sometimes it's not so wonderful, but quite often it's wonderful. I'm very happy with it. I think that bit over there needs a little bit more water and for my liking. I want it to spread out a bit more. So I'll often shield when I'm more adding water with my hand and just go like that. 
so you're still applying it but it stops it going in this area because I don't want any more water in that area I just wanted it in that area and that's spreading out nicely now so that's um, the painting of that one and um, I'll come back again another time and show you what it's like finished Hi, thank you for watching. I'm Kathy Reed at Kathy Reed Arts. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Just pop them in the comments section and I'll get round to them as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day and enjoy using masking and hopefully implementing some of the tips that you've learned today. Thank you.